And I'm joined by the star of the show, Nancy Appel. Nice to talk to you. Very nice to be here. Thanks. Now, you're in town. We need to start off by explaining what this ridiculously named musical is about. Well, make sure you know it's not you're in town. It's you're in town. Deliberately. Absolutely deliberately. And it's, it is sort of about that, but it's not really about that. It's uh, basically about um, a town that experiences a 20-year drought and a private company takes over the water supply. And they have to charge for you to go and do the business. They do indeed, yes. And I happen to run the, the poorest, filthiest urinal in town. You really are disgraceful the way you treat the general public. I am, aren't I? It's a fabulous musical. And what we should say about this is, firstly, it's award-winning. Won three Tonys. Mm-hmm. Is that right? And, yes. and tell us what they were for. It was, it was Best Direction, Best Book, and Best Music. And it should have been Best Theatre as well, because the appearance of this theatre, may I say, is appalling. <laughs> it is, isn't it? But, you know, that's all, that's all fake. We have a brick facade on, on the back wall. It looks like the back wall of the, of the, uh, the uh, house, but it isn't. It's really a totally fake brick wall that looks as horrible and disgusting as the one that we had off-Broadway. And, and the front and the facade of the theatre is almost as disgusting as the title of the musical, isn't it? Well, if you like plywood, <laughs> that's, that's exactly what it looks like. It's all boarded up. It looks like people have come to the wrong place. This is all very deliberate though, isn't it? All of this. Oh yeah, they designed the front of the house. They designed the whole thing so that it would look like that. But I before we opened, a lot of people walked by sure that they were in the wrong place. What it reminds me of is South Park, the TV show, which is <laughs> kind of similar where it, it, it f- pokes fun at anything, but at the end there's always a moral. And there really is a serious moral with this about community and about people and about business and bringing those two worlds together and making money. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think one of the most uh, interesting comments that um, one of the main characters, Officer Locksock, says at the end, he, he, uh, little Sally, another character with him, they were together a lot during the show, she says, what kind of musical is this? You know, and he says, what's the matter, little Sally? Don't you think people want to be told their way of life is unsustainable? And everybody laughs, but it's true. <laughs> you know, as we as we use up all the, the fuel and, and we, we dirty all the water, um, you know, I mean, there really is a point to this. The great thing I love about this musical is is one of the lead characters is kind of outside of it by just turning all the lights off and putting a, a focus light on him mm-hmm. and he kind of says this is a musical and this is what's going on a great trick to play on an audience it is great and people i think it's been done before in a way but not really as seamlessly as as the guys who wrote that they just did a brilliant job writing this and um and sometimes the world of narration is the world that people focus on the most in, in the audience uh, and then other and then other times they sort of focus on 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 the uh on the uh, main story. Let's talk about you for a moment, Nancy, because you've been in so many things. You've done TV as well. Mm -hmm. You're a big star. Firstly, why did you want to come to this musical? Was there something particularly appealing about it? Yeah. Well, you know, the director called me. We we did a reading of it a couple of years ago before we... we, um mounted it on stage and he said okay i've got this musical i want you to read it's called you're in town now don't say anything you know i said no if you think it's good i've worked with him four or five times before i said if you think it's good i'll read it and so he sent me a script and they had made a little cd of of this little um festival that they had done uh and uh, it was fantastic and you don't often read a script like that which was very much in the same form than as it is now and also the music there are a couple of different songs now but for the most part the score was intact then and i said it's just fantastic this is the greatest thing so we did a reading of it and it went very well as i thought it would because it was just wonderful and brilliant the writing and i said well if nobody messes it up we'll just keep going you know and that's what happened nobody messed it up the big time producers came in you know and more big time producers came in and they just kept treating it the right way because if it had been overproduced and if we had come to broadway first i think it's likely that something would have gone wrong we kind of came in under the radar and uh, were discovered sort of in an underground kind of a way and i think that's what what gave us kind of a base for a, a larger acceptance 
sense, you know, in the general public. There does seem to be a trend at the moment on Broadway and in the West End to make uh, the biggest spectacular possible, mm-hmm. to spend the most money on the mm-hmm. set, the most money on the lighting and have fireworks on stage mm-hmm. and, and streams in the middle and, and anything possible to distract away from the lack of script mm-hmm. or the lack of music. This really has nothing. I mean, we're sat here now in the theatre looking at what looks absolutely repulsive <laughs> to look at, but it is so brought alive purely by the music and the performance. It really is incredible. Yeah, all there is is a catwalk. I'm just describing it. There's a catwalk and basically a tile wall that turns. And nobody turns it but us, by the way. <laughs> you know, it's all actor-driven stuff. And we don't have anything. We don't have automation. You know, we don't have much of anything going on backstage, you know. So, um, yeah, it's all, it's all done by by the magic of of you know, acting and singing and dancing, which is which is kind of refreshing, actually. And we must emphasize that despite the title of this, it really isn't vulgar, it isn't tasteless, no. it isn't offensive, it, there is no swearing in there it, is it, not, it is just funny. There's not a single bad word in the show. Not a single one. Someone says, damn, and that's it. <laughs> we can say that, I think, on this program. I think we can say that. It's a family show. I have to say, before we talk about you, and I do want to talk about you, the, there is the best opening scene to any musical I think I've ever seen anywhere in the world. Something happens at the beginning, and it starts, and you're there, and you're, you're stuck to what is happening on stage, and in a second like that, you turn it around, and everybody's hysterically laughing. You've got to come and see it just for the opening seconds, and then leave. If you, if you, if you don't find that funny, probably leave. I think we can say that, can't we? I think there was only one time that I can recall that an elderly couple walked out. Now, some people, you know, it's not for everybody, but an elderly couple walked out in the first, I think, three minutes of the show. And you're right. If you don't like it then, (laughs) you probably won't. But the thing is, in that first three minutes, you understand everything about what's going to happen in the evening. I think it becomes very clear where you are and what kind of a ride you're going to go on. I can't really think of a word to describe this kind of humour. It isn't daft, it isn't silly, it isn't terribly clever, but it is clever. It is just funny. I, mean, I don't think we should try and dissuade anybody for coming by saying it's a certain type of comedy, because no. it really isn't. Well, when, I think that some people were put off a little bit when they thought it was just about um, poking fun at other musicals. We do do that, some, but it wouldn't... It wouldn't ruin anyone's enjoyment of the show if they hadn't seen Les Mis, for example. There is a great scene, and again, we can't give it away. The Les Mis scene, I'm not even going to go there. It's very funny. Nancy, let's talk about you. TV, theatre, very, very different mediums. On the stage, you know immediately whether you're good, because if they don't laugh and they don't clap, you know you're not very good. Do you prefer doing that where you've got the the immediate laughter, the immediate applause at the end, or TV where it's taken hours to make something that's probably 25, 30 minutes? Well, you know, um, I've done... uh, Tons more, uh, more theater than I have television. The thing I like about about uh, being in a play is, I think that's what most of us are attracted to when we become actors. We're attracted to being in front of people and and watching them enjoy themselves. At least that's how it is for me. Um, and the thing that I respect about great TV and film actors is they can live through that incredible boredom of waiting for the next take and still be as as dynamic and fresh as they were you know maybe 10 hours ago um so personally i enjoy i enjoy theater um and also you know ang lee said something interesting to me once and it was probably the best thing i ever learned about being in a film he said just remember my dear when you're in the front of the shot you're 15 feet tall (laughs) And it really makes a big difference when you think yeah. about it that way. As you say, it's an amazing performance. You've got a great part. We haven't said the name yet. I've deliberately. Penelope Pennywise. <laughs> what a perfect name. Who thought of that? What genius thought of that name? I guess those guys. I guess, uh, you know, Mark Holman and Greg Cotis thought of it because they, they have it. It's amazing. They just thought of everything. These guys are just incredible. And they're just the sweetest sort of young guys, you know, and I would come up to them. We started working on the, on the show and I said, do you, do you know how brilliant this is? And they just sort of look at each other and sort of smile. And I mean, I think they knew that they had written something that was funny and good, but I don't think they knew, um, what kind of an effect it would have on the theatrical community at large. 
you know, because I still don't think they believe it, you know, even with their Tony Awards. It's been a real, real pleasure talking to you today. Thank you so much, Nancy Opal, here at You're in Town <laughs> uh, at the Henry Miller Theatre. Promise, I promise you, I promise you that this show is great and it's not offensive. We can't say that enough, really, because the title is off-putting. And I know that even to say it, you're kind of going, oh, but it really is a lot of fun, the show. I know, it, it truly is. And it's, 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 it's really original and it's not original in, in, in a way that would m- upset anyone, I'm sure. We've had young children, we've had plenty of old folks who come in and say, I have not laughed that hard for years. And that's, that makes you feel great. And the kind of humor is on several levels as well. You don't need to get all the gags. Some of the gags are different to others. Yeah, yeah. No, there's plenty to laugh. There's plenty to laugh at whether you have seen 15 musicals or whether this is your first. And I've met a lot of people for whom this is their very first musical. Really? Yeah. And They could be disappointed when they see others. Well, I'm afraid they might be. I presume you're like me. You've seen a lot of rubbish in the past. Oh, yeah. I said, well, you're lucky because this is a good one. (laughs) A real pleasure talking to you today. Nancy Opal, thank you so much for sparing the time because I know you showbiz Broadway people are very busy. Oh, yes. Busy, busy, busy. It's been my pleasure. Thank you.